computer. Okay, so now it's started. Um, so uh, as you can see the screen on top, this is basically the running program currently mm -hmm. um, in the system. So analog is running, DHT is running, mm -hmm. uh, moisture sensor, oh, even the very first one started off giving good results. So it's uh, done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so currently number two, yeah, number five and number eight are actually immersed. Okay, um, but there is a, some funny thing. I actually whooped out the moisture two, so there is no oh, moisture so, two. Sorry, that I meant moisture three. Okay, oh right, you see this number is quite high. Yep, this number is quite high too. And also, when you do the comparison, you see that. These are decagon sensors. So basically yep. 62 for a decagon sensor means it's submerged by water. Yeah. Right? Okay. And the rest of them is pretty much like zero. This sensor except, probably yep. is also- That's submerged. also in. Okay, yep. excellent. So that's that means we are in the same page. And also these things has been parsed. Yep. Uh, the suction one has a bit problem, see? Yes. Yeah, so we haven't figured out. And suction yeah. six, as we discussed. So yeah. negative, Negative 0.06 means the sensor is not being recognized. So we have uh, to pick it One up. second, Chen Ming. Sure, sure. One okay, second. all good. So it's resumed. Um, so clearly there are number one and the number six that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you look at any sensors that works, you will see mm -hmm. that the temperature, this is the original temperature. And then it increases to 1925, 1925. Mm -hmm. And, and then the heating stopped, and then that's where it dissipates. But once you try to calculate the suction, it's basically the, the temperature difference between this value and mm -hmm. that value. Yeah. And if it's if it's more submerged by water, mm -hmm. then um, the delta T is small. If mm -hmm. it's very dry, it gives a high value. So that's basically the way how yeah. you do the calculations. And usually um, the um the the the, the dot logger doesn't do the post processing it's actually yes. the web page that do, yes, does yes, all yes, the yes, post yes. processing and so yep. you figure out your feeding curves yes, yes so yes. now what i'm trying to do here is to uh again i quickly show you how um the new script works and then yep. uh python and then you've got um pyduino projects mm -hmm. and then i got a um, wastewater. I'm sorry. I just I just need to go to that mm -hmm. um, directory and then. Hi. Okay. So that's where we are. Mm -hmm. um, I did have changed a few things, and I need to know let you know exactly what does it mean. So yeah. Um, the first part doesn't change because it's just uh, import to the libraries. Mm -hmm. Now you find one thing, instead of having only one credentials for post online, I actually create two. Okay. Uh, the reason is because we actually have got two servers running at the same time. Yes. Which is for redundancy. You. Yeah, redundancy. And we do it in a stepwise way. So once I create a new one, the one has a relatively higher version as compared to the original one. Yes, yes, yes. I did have tried to upgrade the existing one and it failed. And that field is disastrous because we have a running project. And you know, open source doesn't give you any kind of guarantee that you know your update is gonna be successful. Yeah, you always have that with uh, taken without warranty. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I wouldn't try to update that. Instead, mm. I just do a fresh install and keep that version. So this is mm. the way how I do it. Um so this setup has been running for two years. You know the field system. Yep. Um, this is the new one. Yeah. So that is basically, I'll give you a talent um, account, which means yep. that you can set up project there. Yep. Um, um, so then, then we will do a configurations from there. Yeah. Yep. Now, if you go to, if you go further down, then the rest of them are the same. So yep. suction heating time, sleep time, mm -hmm. um, You've got your IDs for um, Arduino. Yep. Um, you also have another one called Publish to Things Board 102. So 102 mm -hmm. is basically a simple alias for the new um, um, online platform. 
Uh, before you go down, sorry, I just yeah. have a question. This yeah. uh, file name equals www.1.csv. Yeah. That's a storage file, but does that get appended or does it completely get, does it get replaced continuously? Um, it's appended all the time. Okay. So it's just in the very worst scenario, neither of the online system has recorded the data or yeah. the data, the, the data logger is not online. So it's yeah. being saved there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's, if, is that physically on the SD card? Um, it's in the same directory as here. So yeah. if I use LS, you see it's here. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, even on top of that, we have the print screen. So mm -hmm. the screen has got all the uh, verbose processes. So mm -hmm. you can extract the result as well, but usually it's not yeah. a CSV file. So it's, it yeah. takes a bit of time to be able yeah. to get that. Yeah. But I think in general, if the project are very urgent, I would prefer to just um, set up the online platform or oh, you need to. Yeah, one second, sorry. Yeah, yeah sure, all good. Um, no problem. Um, uh, so where we are is that um, in general, um, I wouldn't recommend uh, to extract the data um, and then you know do the Excels um, because it's very time consuming. It you know a lot of people say is that um, um, you know IoT is great because you got a lot of data, but in the meantime you need to basically look at all the data in years and then find out any problematic data and whoop it out and make your graph beautiful. It's, it's yeah. very, very time consuming. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I previously sent you a, a weather and also the field data uh, over the last two years in a weather station. And that mm -hmm. actually takes quite a few days to be able to produce. But that, mm -hmm. once it's been done in the Excel, it's, it's elegant, but in general, the best way to process the output would simply using the online platform and then you know convert that into a PDF. So yeah. you know you you don't really do a lot of data handling, um, yeah. but you need to put your right equations. So yes. originally those equations are those are raw data, but you convert that into your engineering value and then write reports. Yeah. So that would be the easiest way. Yeah. So that's that's just my my um, my recommendation. But if you really have to further tune the data and then you know yeah you yeah. understand exactly what's going on yes perhaps you have to extract the data yeah on the system yeah okay now we we are here um so you see that um, if publish two things for for the two separate systems um mm -hmm. if the either of them are true you will start off connecting that server so now yeah. the current python code basically sends the data to two servers at the same time. Yes. So the original one, the original one is the one that I gave you two years ago. So yep. that um, lab um, dashboard has got all the data. Yep. But now what we're trying to do is that we are going to set up this section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. Now, um, so the rest of them looks um, the same. So you got system, system voltage, that's here, remember? Yep. Yeah, um, and also the onboard humidity that's here. Yep. Right, okay. Now I have to explain something very important here, which we just identified recently. Remember that um, um, we discussed that um, the uh, new software is able to identify a port that doesn't yep. have a sensor connected, correct? Yes. Yeah, but I just find that um, it's doing something very funny. So if the sense if there is no sensor in that port, mm -hmm. it will tell you that no sensor identified, but it will affect the rest of the readings. Does it make sense? So let's say we finish number one. Number one has got a sensor. That's no problem. Now number two doesn't have a sensor, and then I try to do a measurement. They will tell me that there is no sensor. Right. Is that because it's trying to send a string that says there's no sensor while it's take, trying to take the reading of the third sensor? No, no, it's not. It's much more complicated than that. So I, I can tell you exactly the reason why behind that. So if, if we don't have the socket at the bottom of the enclosure, the system runs... What? Hmm. No, what we just happened because I, I, I also you know, um, doing the record and um, doing some updates in behind and realize mm. that. So 
remember that we discussed before that we I wanted to set up a system when you got only two sensors out of 14 ports, yeah. it only reports the two sensors. The rest of them yeah. just tell there is no um, uh, measurements, uh, no, yeah. no, no sensors. But I find that um, the result becomes a bit funny. And the reason is because that the dot logger considers the socket at the very bottom as a sensor. So that, Really? Yeah, yeah. So this is the very first time we realize that. So the way how we resolve it, we try to resolve it, which is to connect the, 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 the data pin to the ground with a, what we call a pull down resistor. Okay. And that is a one minimum, uh, one, one minimum, so one M uh, yep. resistor. Yep. But I find that um, once it's being sent to Perth, it's doing something funny it doesn't really filter out all the noises. So as a conclusion, um, I have to say that we, if, if in, the, in the very worst scenario, if any sensor that stop the rest of them from running, mm -hmm. you just hash that lines. Yeah. See what I did for the number two. And also yeah. that's the reason why there is no number one and number yeah. two here. I see. So I just don't want that empty ports is to making something fun. Yes. We attempted to solve that. Um, but it seems to me that um, it's doing something still funny. Um, yeah. We need to figure out the reason. But yeah. in the worst scenario, uh, first of all, is that if all the ports are occupied by sensor, you forget about that. So no yeah. problem at all. The second case is that if you really have to pull out one sensor, monitor your dashboard and see whether the data is flowing. And if it's mm. not flowing, it's definitely caused by that. Just yeah. whooped out, just hash the yeah, yeah. lines in between them, then problem solved. Yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so unfortunately, um, we have to figure out a better way. So probably we need to change the resistor value. And if that's the case, I can ship you the resistors and mm. just put it into the DIN reel. But yeah. in general, for now, you see the system is constantly running. Yeah. Here. So yeah. no problem. Okay. So yeah, the rest of them is the same. Yeah. And uh, once you have identified the sensors for, let's say, um, number two, and mm -hmm. also the suctions, like mm -hmm. the suction one and suction six, we can mm -hmm. work together to put the right um, configuration here, and then we fix the Python code, basically. Yeah. 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 Okay. So is that is that clear in yep. general about that? So in the end, so let's look at the, the very, very end here. So that's the moisture sensor. So it takes a bit of time. So it's, let's just go to the end of the lines. Mm -hmm. That's easy. Okay. Now, this is the end of the loop. So remember, we've got two published two things for. One mm -hmm. is the pre previous project. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the dashboard here. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that basically at the end of the loop, it just sends the data online, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so that is already taking place yes. all the time. Now, we need to move to the uh, monitoring uh, system. So mm -hmm. to be able to get into it, um, I'll just close this one and then open up another one. Buy in some new domains. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, things for what, um, have you heard of Eagle I.O.? Yes. And, you know, it actually, it's about $4,000 per year yeah. to have an account. I, I get emails about Eagle I.O. Uh -huh. I don't know uh, why, but I do. Okay. Uh, Eagle I.O. is a, um, is suggested um, 202. Um, so dashboard uqgc.org. So that's mm -hmm. basically the the place that we can like go. Uh, okay, so oh. that's that's okay because I didn't put in yeah. that. So mm -hmm. I didn't buy a an SSH safe. So how about let me see? Probably I can just use my IP address to be able to log it in. So that's the IP address. So instead yeah. of going the the web so you can go from here as well yeah um literally this is eagle wild but yes. it's our own server rather than um and and um and to us um we haven't had any issue 
to run our own system. And on top of that, we can make a lot of events on top of this. So we feel quite a bit flexibility yes. and to have our own server. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and if you, so basically I give this one as a talent privilege. So it's an administrator. So you can mm -hmm. even establish another project based on this profile. So this is not a problem. Yeah. Uh, the only issue is that don't overshooting that. So let's say if you shoot data once per second, Mm -hmm. then the storage required is going to be significant and yeah. that will cost an extra load. So yeah. if you do the project like we are doing right now, um, that data is basically like nothing, nothing. It's just a few megabytes. So yeah. if you create two projects, 10 projects, 20 projects, 50 projects, not yeah. a problem, not a problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have some big, um, you know, we have quite a few projects that constantly yeah. feeding, you know, it's just a, a service for everybody. Yeah. Now, so the way how it works is that um, if you start from a clean, um, a clean um, page, yep. um, then you need to go to devices, mm -hmm. right? And then you could create a device um, mm -hmm. by, let me see, this is a plot device. So add new device. Mm -hmm. uh, you could say ABC mm -hmm. um, and then you add that. So yep. you've got a, a ABC here. Yep. Um, then the most important thing here is to get your access token. Yeah. Right? So the access token means that um, this is the ID for the project you're working on. Yeah. And this needs to put into your um, dot logger. So yeah. let's go here. So basically, remember that um, we discussed that uh, here you've got the Padrino credential. Mm -hmm. You go to WWL. So we mentioned that you've got trials, right? Mm -hmm. So this is your access token. Okay. So you need to put that ID here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that actually means the Python code understand which device it sends to. Yeah. Yeah. I've already done that, but I just explained how it's been done if you need to create another one. Yeah. Now, here is the host name. So the host name, be careful. If it's I, if it's an IP address, mm -hmm. you do it like this. You don't yep. put an HTTP in front. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. I tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> I just tried. Yeah. Or if it's an IP address, you have to do um, HTTP, ABC, Dot com, yep. then no slash. Don't do a slash. If you don't, if you do a slash, then it doesn't work. So okay. you can't do that. You can do this, right? Okay. So yep. that's the format is very strict. Yeah. And um, so just think, just 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 be careful when you try to create a object like this. So this is the rules, right? Yeah. Okay. So that actually means that um, your system understands um which um, device to send to, correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, once that is being completed, then you could go to dashboard, mm -hmm. right? I've already created a dashboard, but I can create another one. So let's say create a new dashboard. Let's say trial again. Mm -hmm. Description would be B, C, D, right? Mm -hmm. um, then we have it here. Then we can open the dashboard. Now, mm -hmm. once you open up the dashboard, the dashboard needs to know which one to display, right? Yeah. So because you've got, let's say hundreds of devices yeah. and you want to let this dashboard to show exactly the result that you would like to, to show, then yeah. you need to click, you need to, uh, let me see, um, probably I need to go to the edit mode. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to go to the alias, a, mm -hmm. a, entity aliases, yep. add alias, say new object. Mm -hmm. Then the filter type would be a single entry. Mm -hmm. And then this is a device, right? Yep. And then you will find ABC here, mm -hmm. right? So I've already done ABC. So ABC is a trial. So, yep. so this one is actually the one that is currently working. Yep. So I just go there and you add it. And um, so then you click save, which means that um, your um, data, sorry, you in this profile, you are able to get the, um, the data from that object, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now we can add new widgets. Yeah. So if you click the widgets, usually the one that I work with is um, the charts. Yeah. And then we have the time series yep. line chart. And then you would have a add mm -hmm. and ent entry, entry yep. alias, yep. new object. So yep. let, me, let me have a look. So uh, see, yep. this is the new result. So that's the DHT22 yep. underscore yep. I. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So this is the humidity. And if you see what's being um, delivered from the online platform, mm -hmm. um, particularly when you show the big um, JSON file, or all, all here, let's say, mm -hmm. um, IHT, uh, not IHT, what's the name of that sensor? Okay, so that's yeah. the important one. Yeah. So DHT, sorry, yeah, you're correct. Yeah. So remember that we when we do the DHT, yeah, the name called DHT22 underscore RH means that's the humidity for the um yeah. for the dot logger. Yeah. So that's the way how you uh find the corresponding value from yeah. Them. So let's say we just do this one here, yeah. right? Okay, now if you click add. You will see is here. Now, the reason it doesn't show is because the scale is yeah. too small. So you need to convert the uh, display um, area to, let's say, in last one hour, let's say two yeah. hours, yeah, 10 hours. Yeah. If you update, that's where we have it here. Mm -hmm. So it's basically decreasing because yes. we I set it up somewhere around um yeah um yeah so my time is not your time yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it yeah, has yeah. already got three data here right yeah and you can further improve it somehow like um um let's say you would like to have um some settings let's say this is uh humidity mm -hmm. dollar logger and you could also have um, one most important one, mm. which is to create a function, right? So mm -hmm. as a post-processing function, so return, let's say currently all the values is um, in from zero yeah. to 100%, yeah. you want to make it as um, uh, from zero to one, you could yeah. do that, yeah? So that's basically the way how you write the function. Mm -hmm. And you will be able to see that the result changes from zero to one. But unfortunately, the y axis has to be better formatted to yeah. be able to display the differences, which yeah. you could further do from uh, so. the advances. Just look for that. So it's all there. Um, yeah, it looks like a. It looks like because that di when you when you enter the formula, that looks a bit like what a Python little add-in script, no? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, uh, everything yeah. else looks like CSS. Yes, yes. Um, it's actually JavaScript, I believe. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just need to say number of decimals to display. So I would say two decimals. Yep. And once I do that, you will see the one is being changed to in between yep. the two values. Now, so I think uh, the humidity is pretty straightforward. The other thing I would like to show you is that um, if you want to add multiple uh, entries here, yep. so that will be done by uh, create uh, import widget, uh, let me see, create new widget. So yeah. import means that you can export it and then import to, yeah. to yeah. that using a JSON file. So yeah. I literally haven't played much with this. Um, the most of ones that I work with is the time series charts yeah. because that's most people would like to work with. Yes. The new objects. So this is the tricky part. So if you want to, let's say, compare all the moisture ratings from one graph, then yep. you basically put in say yep. uh, MO10 TEMP, yep. uh, MO11 TEMP, yep. yep. 12. I gotcha. Yeah, so, so that's, 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 that's about it. And then you will create something like this and yep. then you zoom, you make it in the right size because yep. my screen is too small. Yep. Um, and you will see some values look like that. And also you can click and unclick. 
Yeah. Oh, let me see. You have to accept this. So if you only want to show one result, that's the way yeah. how I show yeah. it. Yeah. So that's basically the way how I set up the web page. Now, one important thing here. When you when you log out and log yeah. back in here, this is a administrator account. Mm -hmm. You probably would like to have a client to be able to see the data rather than make changes, mm -hmm. right? So in that case, you need to create a user. The user can see all the data mm -hmm. and not able to make any modification, like create yes. object, create devices. Yeah. So the waste way of doing that is to create the customer management. Yeah. So you go to the customers, you create, let's say you um, yeah. customer one, mm -hmm. and you add it here. Um, I haven't done that for, for a while, but um, let, let's but try. That let's, seems very handy. Yeah, a, a dot, uh, let's say Chenmin. Uh -huh. Yeah, at uh, uq dot edu dot au let's say this yep. and that will display activation link so mm -hmm. it can down both so you can send an email or the uh, do our activation link yeah and then this is the um address that is able to mm -hmm. um let me see this one is doing some funny things here um because i need to create an object but um the uh, the tab is blocking the way Oh, mm -hmm. okay, so I can do that. Um, then I have here, so I could, I could create my own passport, uh, password, mm -hmm. then I update my password. So basically this is my own account, but currently I can't see anything because as a uh, administrator, you didn't show, you did, I didn't link this customer to a specific project. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I just create a customer, but I didn't create a device or dashboard to the customer yes. yet. Yeah. So yeah. that means I have to log out and then go here again. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Why that's invalid? Uh, update password. So um, then I have to go again to the device. Yep. And then. Um, assign something to customer. So remember that this is the location where we store all the data. Mm -hmm. We need to assign this to customer one. Remember that so Chenming is under customer one. So customer mm -hmm. one is a big umbrella, like a company, like a mining yeah. company. Yes. And then Chenming is a start from customer one, right? Uh -huh. So I assign here. So once you assign that, you also need to assign the dashboard. So remember yeah. that this is the dashboard and um, you could um, assign, manage, assign the customers, mm -hmm. and then I have the customer one here. So yeah. if I update in this way, you see, so now I need to make a difference. So this is the super user. It creates yes. a lot of things. You delete a lot of things which you yes. don't want yes. other people to do. Yes. Then you could you could give them the customer one, which would mm -hmm. be is that right? It looks good. Let me see. Probably I did something. Okay, it is. Okay. Now you see it's reduced the version. Mm -hmm. You only see something that you're assigned to see. Yes. And then you see the dashboard. You don't really have to. I've already only got the yeah. one that I can see. And then I can open dashboard to look at the results. Oh, yeah. I haven't saved the dashboard yet. So that's why I can't see yeah. the result, but you get yeah. the idea. You get I understand, the idea. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it has a lot of other functions as well, which I haven't done much, but I give this privilege uh, for you to work with it. And if you enjoy that, you could also set up your own server and I can show you how to, yeah. how to work on that. So yeah, I, I think um, that's what I can say for now. So should we, Keep going with the dashboard, or you reckon you can do the rest? Uh, I can do the rest. Um, okay. I just need uh, a the, the access. Yeah, uh, details. I'll, I'll send you all the access. Um, I and do then... have one question. Yeah. Yep. Uh, can you make your own widgets? Okay. So if I do the widgets. No, as in like, as in 
you know you can make your own custom widgets like say you because nowadays uh data data what do you call it uh, data visualization has become a field uh that's really recognized okay uh, you know, I making just, your own custom chart right i just realized one thing i mm -hmm. assigned a wrong uh, dashboard so this yeah. dashboard has got nothing yeah. whereas the other one has got something so i yeah. think we should work on this one here so you want to show add new widgets right yep mm -hmm. uh create let me see create new widgets yeah which one would you like to see i wanted to see if there was a custom one so instead of a oh. line or bar chart you know let's say you know you made a uh, a bubble chart or something oh um you would have this one in in here i would say a bar chart or oh, a bubble bubble chart i don't know yet but um i think because this one allows you to be able to import new widgets oh, okay. which yes, i have okay. never played with yeah um so the way how i can see that um add new which create create new widget. no not really that one um import widget so there are ways to be able to yeah, yeah see widget library so that's the way it has got alarm widget, analog gauge gauges, chart cards, charts, and control widgets. Yeah. So we have to have these ones ready before you can make use of it. And um, yeah. ThingSpot is currently developing that. So yeah. I've seen new widgets coming up on top of the previous versions. So yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. seen a lot. Of, I've seen a lot of stuff in uh, Power BI that I'd probably love to bring in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a um, platform to play with as well. Uh, yeah, Power BI, um, okay. but I, uh, it's uh, the free version. So Microsoft have their own, uh, what do you call it? Uh, data analysis Azure. tool. Azure. Oh, Power BI. So Azure, okay. Azure comes into Power BI, but ah, Azure, right. Azure's more for big data. Right, uh, right. Power okay. BI is the data visualization. Ah, okay. Well, so if, once, that's yeah. the case, if that's the case, you could also try to you know, send the data directly to your Power BI instead, if you, if you mm. would like to. Um, I do or try, as well, right? Yeah, or, I do. Yeah. I do try the MongoDB. I think it's mm -hmm. MongoDB. Oh, know. it's um, it's uh, I hated MongoDB, and it's also uh, it's uh, what's the word when they stop doing updates? It's a uh, de de deprecated. Ah, uh, deprecated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they right. don't. Yeah, so they've um, gone away with MongoDB. Okay. Well, I. I haven't played with many others at all. So the one that I keep on using is the things for, I believe that tick, tick most of the boxes. Um, mm. Yeah, and and um, and uh, I haven't even played with the rule change yet. So rule change mm. would probably, you probably receive an email if the system doesn't give a response for eight hours, something functions like that. And mm. another important function I would like to implement is that if you've got two devices, Yep. And they are basically delivering data in different intervals. Yeah. And what if you write a function as write a result as a function of results from A and B? Because the data is not in the same time point, you couldn't mm. do a calculation straight away. So this type of um extra work that uh, extra uh, functions um mm. I haven't worked with that. But you know, at least from this, you can see where where we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you 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 feel that the rest is is fine? Or? Yeah, no, the rest is fine. It's uh, fine the only right? thing the only thing that I can't remember, I'm gonna have to go back through through your videos, is how to access the uh to actually uh, connect to it uh when I'm not connected via Bluetooth. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Um that is a little bit tricky. Um so currently we haven't um given the access um of the server to any others, we are not mm -hmm. suggested to. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you would, you if you really came to, then I need to negotiate with um, the organizer to be able to send you one because that one has got quite a few, um, what do you call, um, other ongoing project running at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So it's a server that we have to maintain. So yeah. the, we've got how many servers? Three servers. Two yes. of the servers are used for. Uh, running things board. Yes. A third server is to do the reverse SSH. Yeah. Reverse SSH is that um, you um, is always online, and then you yeah. put SSH into it, and then you SSH to the specific project. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think we I need to find out the right way to, to yeah. be able to configure that. I think there are there are there is a useful way. So you can do um, I mean you can you can give certain permissions uh just uh mm -hmm. within it. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't but I don't know how restrictive you can be with the permissions. I don't think you can say uh user can only run one command. I think mm -hmm. you can only do I, read, I do write. have one way of um you know how to how to one one of the way is that it's just a normal user, um, yeah. not rather a uh, super user. Yeah. Uh, so you can create as many normal users as possible. So that is yeah. the way. Or if do you have a running Linux system? If you, uh, you do? Uh, not on me. Um, okay. I've. Oh, I wonder if it's this one. Mm. No, I used to. I used to have this uh, dual partitioned as a Ubuntu. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, we had to take this back and um, what do you call it? reformat it. Uh, at home, right. I've got something that I had dedicated to become a Linux computer. Mm, okay. Otherwise, um, I, I don't run Linux. Right. Okay. Because um, you, you you definitely need to have a server uh, mm. accessible um, globally to be able to um, um, to to do a bridge. Uh, yeah. to the specific dot logger. Um, yeah. I will need to find out a way to give yeah. you the access. If you are very keen to, to, to get the access, let me know and I'll yeah. find out a way. And yeah. in general, you know, I would like to think to let things go flow. You yes. first allow it to flow and figure out the problems and then yep. you fix the problem and yeah. then you make it better rather than say, oh, that's a lot of security. And if yeah. security is the reason, we don't even do a YouTube videos on that because, yeah. you know, we want, we want to allow many many's to be able to work on that so yeah. you know, that's my my wish <laughs> yeah no exactly right yeah. yeah okay so i i think um that's about it yeah, yeah. okay that sounds good to me yeah um so uh in the next round um